Merry Christmas and welcome to the Arrival Show as we see the conclusion of Leg 3. Not just for you fans at home, but of course for the sailors who've been battling throughout the Southern Ocean. It's been 6,500 miles of hard fought sailing. Everybody knew that this leg, sailing into Melbourne, in the Australian state of Victoria would be a crucial moment in the Volvo Ocean Race and it certainly hasn't disappointed. I am delighted to say that we've got Conrad Coleman, offshore yachtsman, back here with us for this incredible moment. And Conrad, let's jump straight into it. Mafre, Spanish boat, they've been trying to win the Volvo Ocean Race for so long, now coming in to win this leg. And it's a crucial leg, double points. It's an absolutely crucial leg. Uh, as you say, double points, but also the Indian Ocean. It is the first taste of the, the return to the DNA of the Volvo Ocean Race, the Indian Ocean. I've been there a couple of times myself and it is absolutely brutal. Those of you that have followed the race glued to your tablets and your screens will have seen uh, crash jibes, uh, not, not quite <laughs> collisions with, uh, with icebergs, but cold, cold water, freezing cold water in the hands and the faces. And, it's, and one thing that has absolutely blown me away as an offshore sailor is just the workload that we've seen on board the boats. These guys and girls have been working so, so hard down there. It's been absolutely unbelievable. And the really big thing has been, it just hasn't let up all the way into Melbourne. Let's see where the fleet are right now. We are getting into the final stages. In fact, as you can see there, from the virtual eye positions, we have got the top four teams pretty much at the finish line. But let's have a look at the overall picture. Axel Nobel, still with a few miles to go. They had that problem with the main track. We'll be dialing into them a little bit throughout the next few days and keeping you up to date. Turn the tide on plastic, Sun Honkai Scallywag, still very much a battle going on out there. David Witt's got to keep his boat sailing fast because Dee Kafari is nipping at his heels. But now we come to the today. The next few hours are gonna see Mafre, who has been leading these top four boats. Dong Fong Race Team in second place, Vestas 11th Hour Racing in third, and Team Brunel in fourth. We could still theoretically see a few of those positions change, but Mafre, I mean, with a day to spare, they just look so strong out there. Well, it's absolutely perfect for the Spanish team arriving on Christmas morning here in Melbourne. I don't know if they've been good girls and boys or bad, but this is absolutely the prison that they've been working hard for. Well, earlier on, just before the boat got into the bay here in Melbourne, we spoke to Blair Took and Sophie Seasick on board. Now, remember Sophie on Australian and she at her hometown, Melbourne, a special moment for this boat as they approach the finish line. Well, Blair, we, we see you there on deck, smile on your face and rightly so. Was there any point in the last few days where you felt vulnerable or was it just all falling to plan? No, I think we, um, you know, we did some pretty good work just before that last ice skate one. Got the jibe just right again. We'd obviously been pushing really hard with Dong Feng for the whole race, been neck and neck, and they'd been in front of us for the most part. Um, but we managed to get just in, in front of them into that last ice skate, that last jibing fest, and we came out there with like a 30 or 40 mile lead. Um, and from there, we, we knew we were heading into that big, a bit more pressure again as we headed up to Melbourne. Um, they actually went into stealth mode, which was an interesting move on their part, and um, basically just forced a hand to pu keep pushing hard for that 24 hours. So, um, you know, that was when we really just put the hammer down and kept s sailing the boat really well. And then when they came back online uh, 18 hours later, we, uh, well, 24 hours later, we had a pretty healthy lead. So, um, and you know, since then we've been quite comfy. How big is this victory? Because looking at the projected points, it puts you in a healthy, healthy spot. Yeah, obviously it's been a really solid start for us, and um, to take a double points win and, and uh, into here will be, be really pleasing for us. And obviously, just it's nice to know that we can win in, in different conditions. And um, you know, this has been the first real test, pushing the boat hard. Um, for two weeks and, and some pretty big conditions. It's, um, it's a good confidence boost for us for later on the race. And, um, you know, we've certainly learned a lot for the, from this 
last two weeks as a crew and um, you know we'll, we'll debrief this well and um, you know look ahead to the next league which will be quite different and then um, and the rest of the race. I'm guessing there's a bit of a smile on Sophie's face sailing into home waters. Sophie's wrapped and obviously we're driving now as we head into Melbourne at home waters for her. It's a um, pretty cool feeling so uh, you know I was saying to her last night that you know it's neat to be able to sail, sail into your home port let alone in first place after just sailing across the southern ocean so um, now she's pretty excited. Sophie, uh, we see you driving, you're driving Mafre into the yeah. finish. Uh, this has got to feel pretty good. Oh, it feels so good. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. We're going down the coastline now of Victoria, the west coast, and um, yeah, as soon as we saw land a few hours ago, it's just got butterflies. It's, it's awesome. And for someone like yourself as well, you know, from Australia, from Melbourne, to be leading the Volvo Ocean Race fleet into your hometown, did you ever envisage this sort of moment? Oh, it's not really, to be honest. Um, you know, let alone doing this full version race, uh, you know, I, I didn't know if I'd get that opportunity again. And then knowing that I'd be sailing into my home port was just unbelievable. And then let alone to be winning the leg is just, there's nothing more that you could ask for, really. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just awesome. How does it feel to know that all that hard work and all those times that you got out of your bunk to jibe in the middle of the night, all of that was worth it? Yeah, I think um, at the time it was super hard. You know, we, we didn't even take our gear off. We were getting wet, um, just missing watches. And, um, you yeah, know, you just have to keep reminding yourself that, it, you know, we're racing and it's all going to be worth it. And, um, and now, yeah, it seems like a distant memory, really. Seems like it was a month ago. <laughs> Blair, we, we see you there on deck, smile on your face, and rightly so. Was there any point in the last... Well, Sophie Cizik, happiness there with Blair Took on board as well, on board Mafre. Now, you know, Conrad, you, you talk about this team, and it's important. We can pick out a few people. Sophie Cizik, a native of Melbourne, Blair Took, obviously a huge name in sailing at the moment with the Olympic medals and the America's, America's Cup, Cup win. Yep. But Xavi Fernandez, I mean, as a skipper, he's almost like a man in the background sometimes, isn't he? I mean, an incredible leader. Uh, well, yes, yeah, so he, he is really somebody who can almost lead from behind in the sense that uh, he, he was never the helmsman when he was an, an Olympian. Uh, he, he's been around the world a number of times, but he's never really had the role as a full-time skipper until this point. Now, in, in, in some contrast to the other first-time full-time skippers uh, that we can see in the fleet here, we can see that Shabby is very comfortable working, uh, working his strengths. And so that means that he is often in the middle of the boat, using the pit or grinding. And, you know, I, I said that he, he sort of leads from behind, but he really leads by example in the sense that mm. he's the one that's stacking harder than anybody else. He's the one that's grinding harder than anybody else. And he puts the specialists in the roles where they can actually make the, the best difference on board. And it's been an unbelievable leg with that philosophy as well. I mean, let's just take a little bit of a, oh, I tell you what, we were going to show you a quick clip of how Mafre have done it, but now we can show you how they are doing it right now. This is Mafre, live images from, well, we're in Alicante, so the other side of the world. And this is Mafre coming in now to win leg three. Double points, Southern Ocean, all the big tests of the Volvo Ocean Race rolled into one. As Conrad was saying, we've had knockdowns, we've had breakages, we've seen injuries as well. And Mafre, through all of this, has really emerged unscathed and fast. Com completely unscathed. And the thing that I will, will, will come back to uh, when, we, when we give you a, a review of the league a little bit later on, but the thing that has blown me away about Mafre is not only uh, did they come through this cleanly, they didn't have any breakages on board, they didn't have any injuries on board in contrast to some of the, their other competitors, but they did so many more maneuvers than anybody else out there. Uh, we, we counted before we came on air, and this is the boat that did the most maneuvers all the way through the entire league, and flawless. As you saw, if you get one drive wrong, as, as Axel Nobel did uh, earlier on in the leg, then it throws you right out the back of the pack. If you have any technical problems, then you are completely cooked. These guys, they did more work than anybody else, and they did it perfectly. I mean, you, you, I mean, Dongfeng race team, you need to feel sorry for them because they were leading for so much of the leg. But Mafre were absolutely there, ready to pounce. And when that, the door was open, just a crack, they fired their way through and now out in front they have been adding miles and miles to their lead. We are watching Mafre edge ever closer to the finish line. It is just off the pier. You can see it on your screen right now and when they cross this line it will confirm what 
was basically been written on the wall for the last 24 hours with so many miles in the bank nothing is going to be able to stop them now they are going to gain all the points plus of course an extra day's extra rest and a bonus point and and that's that's the thing is that not only do we get a bonus point here plus the plus the um stretching away not only on the water but also on the leaderboard um you can you can see the, them here coming in uh, at night on christmas morning and so you've got the incredible experience of of ending up in your family's arms on Christmas Day, and so you've got an extra day's rest plus a big smile on your face on Christmas morning. Well, That's got to pay a lot. And how big must those smiles be? We were heard from Sophie Cizek a, a few moments ago. She was obviously happy coming in, but now with live images, and in fact, down there following the boat, we've got Nick Bice, the boat yard manager for the Volvo Ocean Race. He is following Mafray in and across the line. Who better to talk to about what's going on on board? Let's hear from him. Yeah, hey guys, we've just seen Matt Farr emerge out of the darkness of Port Phillip Bay here. And very close to about to go across the finish line now. That, uh, uh, going down here nicely here with the A3 and only probably 14 or 15 knots of breeze, but um, we're getting pretty hard to turn out. Okay, we're just seeing uh, some images from on board. We've got Nick Bice out on the rib at the moment, from that, uh, with, with some uh, like. videos as well. And uh, just interesting there right now, they're going to go for a jibe, and that was actually them signaling to the rib crew. <laughs> That's right. It's nice to hear from, from Nick Bice there. He has done the Volvo Ocean Race multiple times, both as a sailor and also in his role now as, uh, as boatyard manager. Now, <laughs> um, he's a bit of a local, not only is he Aussie, but, um, but he's from Adelaide, just down the road. Um, and so it's been a short commute for him to, to work. Nick Bice normally flies all the way around the world. Uh, he does more miles in one week than these boats do in the, during the entire race. Anyway, you can see there Sophie Seasick with, um, with her hair in braids. Earlier we saw her uh, on... Uh, on, the, on the wheel, on the helm, driving the boat in towards her hometown. Now she's at the back of the boat providing a lot of power, uh, getting them through these last couple of maneuvers as the miles tick down. But what a victory here um, for Mafre. Just incredible for Spain, incredible for Mafre. This is their second attempt uh, as a team, as Team Mafre. Uh, coming into the Volvo Ocean Race and here their experience and their form going into the start of the race uh, is really coming to bear and these guys are looking really unbeatable at this point. Unbeatable and incredibly formidable and we know we've got a lot of fans, we've got a lot of Spanish fans, fans of Mafre watching the footage right now. We knew that there was a couple of maneuvers to go to get them across the finish line so we're not surprised to see them putting in these last few jibes. It is dark in fact I mean here in Alicante it is five o'clock in the afternoon in Melbourne. It is the middle of the night. These guys are working pretty hard right now. We have got one jibe completed. The speed a little bit down, nine coming up to 10 knots, starting to build the pace back up. One more jibe to go, and then Mafre are gonna get that double points, plus, as you say, the bonus point. And this is gonna absolutely catapult them into the lead. I mean, when you talk about the scores and what's gonna happen, I mean, they are going to be sitting if the other teams finish in the positions they are. Mafre are going to be sitting on 29 points with Dongfeng Race Team and Vestas 11th Hour Racing on 23. This is fantastic for Spain and fantastic for Mafre. A great way to start your, your attempted domination of the Volvo Ocean Race. So three legs in and a big, big points bonus. We are just waiting to get the boat a little bit closer to the finish line. The rib is having to put the hammer down slightly to keep up with everything. We do punish our camera people a little bit too hard. We've got lights out there to try and bring you the action. You can see the lights of the city behind the boat. There's not a lot else going on out there, but Conrad, the water there is a little bit of swell for our rib to deal with. Ed, it's looking choppy. We're in, uh, we're in the bay. They've been sailing downwind in the bay for the last few hours, uh, and this is nothing in comparison to... <laughs> 
<laughs> Nothing in comparison to the Indian Ocean that they've just crossed, but as you can see here, our camera crew suffering a little bit on the approach to the finish line. Just a few hundred meters to go, and just gives you some indication as to the real conditions that they've had to get through uh, to, to come to this finish line. Well, we are expecting one more jibe to go any minute now. So let's go back to Nick Bice, the boatyard manager. He is down there on the rib next to the camera that you're seeing here. There's a little bit of a delay due to the fact that they are on the other side of the world from where we are here, but let's hear from them now. Oh yeah, just uh, ecstatic scenes here on Matt for at the moment. They've just come through the finish line, filled up their jib, Pablo Arante steering the boat through and uh, old uh, Shabby Fernandez is getting many a pat on the back here. Fantastic. Yeah, I'll tell you what, they've done a fantastic job in this leg. Sailed quite conservatively the first few days and then absolutely hammered it that last four or five days. 100 miles ahead of the rest of the fleet. Fantastic. Well done to them. Sophie Sizek, the uh, local lass. She'll uh, be coming to a uh, huge reception on the dock. I'm 100% sure about that, despite it being Christmas Day, or Christmas morning for that matter. There she is. Pride of Australia. And the pride of Spain. Get Team Matt Frack. Oh, thank you very much, Nick. Nick Bice is down there, the boatyard manager for the Volvo Ocean Race. He's there basically ready to welcome in all these boats because they have just come through hell and now they're going to have to get ready for the next leg. But this team here goes into the rest period a day ahead or at least a good few hours ahead from their main rivals and, of course, a boat that has fared remarkably well. We don't really, we haven't heard of any major problems at all. No, that's right. Here in Race Control in Alicante in Spain, we get all of the communications going back and forth between the boats uh, and, and we're briefed on any problems that the boats have and clean as a whistle. You know, I, I don't think that I've had any problems at all. And especially when you look at the problems that Dongfeng Race Team have had just in the last couple of days when they've had a problem with the keel. They, they, they lost 10 to 15 miles, uh, in the words of, of Charles Cordelier, um, when they were out on the water, when they had the problem with that uh, port keel ram, a little bit of water coming into the boat, a little bit of stress. Stress on the teams there, because you, when you're out in the middle of the, of the ocean, water on the inside of the boat is never good, and a broken keel ram is even worse. So, to be, as you say, this is, this is really sort of the golden era, um, perhaps, for, for Mafre. Um, they're, they're in the lead, they're, they're going to be in the arms of their loved ones, they've got more rest than everybody else, and they've got a clean boat. Now, one thing to talk about that, um, regarding that is, is the accumulation benefits that the Spanish team Mafre is getting here, is that this is uh, counted as a uh, pit stop, isn't it? Mm. Now, um, we were talking earlier to, uh, to Nick Bice, now he is the manager of the, uh, of the massive tent, uh, the, the, the travelling circus that goes all the way around the world, it's a travelling boatyard that looks after these boats in perfect condition. However, it's not here in Melbourne. So the boats, um, so the, the teams um, have to work on the boats themselves to get back into tip-top condition and ready to go on the race all the way back to, um, back to Hong Kong, which is the next leg. So to be able to make it through the Indian Ocean and then make it into this, this sort of short turnaround with no major problems means that they are going to be absolutely the boat to watch when it comes into, uh, into the next leg to Hong Kong. And that's remarkable in itself, but also remarkable when you consider the contrast that we've seen with some of the other boats coming in with some damage to boat and crew, because it has been an unbelievable challenge just to sail through these waters. While we've got a minute, we're going to be hearing from the team. We're going to be doing an interview Hopefully, in just a few moments, if their celebrations calm down enough to give us an in. But before we get that, let's have a look back at this leg, an unbelievable leg three of the Volvo Ocean Race. Here it is in a replay. Well, we had dramatic images at the start, um, blasting their way uh, through, <laughs> uh, through the bay there in Cape Town, and then it was off to the races around the first of the Great Capes, uh, 
the Cape of Good Hope, and then diving southeast down into the Indian Ocean, and then big split here. What was the reason for that? Well, there was a massive Southern Ocean storm. You can see the hot red side on the left side of the screen here. Uh, we, we had reports of the boat sailing in up to 50, maybe gusting 60 knots during this time. Sohun Kai Scallywag and Turn the Tide on Plastic bailed out to the north to avoid the worst of it, but you can see the, the two red boats there at the front were in a locked battle turbocharged right at the front. And then just look at the way that they're stepping their way southeast down towards the south. The water there is cold, so cold, down to five degrees, getting constantly hosed in the face, sprayed um, continually while, <laughs> um, while getting wind at uh, you know, typically 30, 35 knots during this time, but up to 50 again. Now, um, you can see that um, again they, they stepped their way through. This was the key moment that Matt Freight was able to break Dong Fong race team. The French Spanish team um, did half the number of jibes during that, that short period there. Matt Freight stepped into stronger breeze, dived to the southeast before coming up. Dong Fong uh, tried to cut the corner and lost 60 miles in the course of 24 hours. And then, of course, the, the problem that they had um, accumulated with, um, with the problem with the keel that made them vulnerable to uh, Team Brunel and Vestas from the racing coming in from behind, adding a little spice there to the arrivals, and, but Matt Frey clean all the way through the finish. Amazing. I, absolutely phenomenal performance from Matt Frey. You, you've got to hand it to the other teams for pushing them as hard as they did. And it was interesting to hear from Xabi Fernandez a couple of days ago. And he did sort of uh, equate it to having Dongfeng race team behind pushing so hard as to why they were able to bring their A game to the party. These are live images right now. We can see here Mafre through the finish line. The celebrations have died away, and now the realization that, well, you know what, guys, the race continues. We've got to get the sails down. We've got to get the boat to the side. We have got down there on the water right now, Nick Bice in the rib. Let's go to him and get a flavor of what's happening now. Oh, we're going to come back to Nick in just a moment. He's being wrapped up, I hear, with uh, some of the work that's going on right now. Of course, he does have other duties apart from just talking to us. So those are the views from the rib at the moment. And just important here to mention, we were talking about the sails at this point. Uh, right now, this was a 6,500-mile leg. The one before, leg two, 7,000. We had leg one, 1,400, 500, I believe. These sails have already got a hell of a lot of miles under their belts. The sailors, too. But when can we expect Mafre to start showing some cracks? They seem a little bit un you know, unbeatable <laughs> at this point. Well, yes, you know, let, 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 let's not forget that this is a race all the way around the world. We've only made it down to the... Um, the Antipodes, down into Australia. There's a lot more miles to go all the way back up to Asia, back to New Zealand, and then tackling again the Southern Ocean all the way to Cape Horn. Um, so it's still a lot of miles to go, but the boat there in the images that we can see now uh, is shiny, perfect, impeccable. Really, really impressive to get the boat to the stage. And just talk us through what we're seeing here, because a moment ago when we got the rib uh, shot, in fact, we might be able to see that in just a moment, uh, they were reversing, they're going backwards while they're dropping the main. Just, just talk us through this process. Um, yeah, it's a little bit tricky to, to drop the main on these, on these boats because they have um, a halyard lock that engages at every single point. Uh, and so as you drop the main down, you need to have the, the bowman or bow woman, in this case, Sophie Cizek, um, controlling the love, controlling um, the hook or, or, the, or the halyard lock as it comes down. And then the, you can see that they've eased the boom down a little bit so that you can have access to the, to the team as the main comes down, that they're gonna flake it uh, nicely, pushing it backs and forwards from one side to the other uh, across the top of the boom. Uh, and the reason that they were going backwards there is actually um, to try and reduce a little bit of the apparent wind. You can see um, the yellow Q flag or quarantine flag. That's, that's um, a requirement of, of international sailing reg um, regulations that says that you have to announce yourself when you come into a foreign port from overseas. Um, so, Obviously, all of Melbourne has been sitting here waiting for these boats to, to come in, um, but still need to play by the rules. So you can see uh, the, the team there has let the boom down in the middle of the, the cockpit um, on, on one of the forward halyards, and they are flaking um, or, or dropping the main uh, side by side. Now, really important to do this because they've obviously preserved the mainsail all the way through the Indian, Indian Ocean, reefs in, reefs out, uh, almost at the same frequency that we've been seeing the jibes on the tracker. 
Um, and so this is a well-versed procedure. Um, and uh, frankly, the, as we were saying, the sale looks in, in great shape. This is one of the two main sales that they get to use uh, in this race around the world. Um, this is a product uh, called 3DI from uh, Race Partners North Sales. Um, and they get two complete sets to go all the way around the world. Anyway, um, plenty of action um, going on on board right now. Uh, but what we're going to show you now is a, um, is a little, uh, little look at all of the highlights from, uh, from this boat over the past... Um, I'm sorry, we've got the leg highlights coming up for you now. So just uh, hang on because it was a wild ride out there. Cape Town conditions here, got a beautiful southeaster, 25 knots. This is going to be good. Hold on to your hats. Across a ridge, so a ridge is always difficult to cross because this is a transition between two winds. You know, I think we've closed quite a lot on the leaders here. It's uh, been a little good move for us. So it's the calm before the storm. We've got about 24 hours before we know the wind's going to start building, and we get our first really big depression that is going to pack a punch. Into the southern ocean. This is where the fun begins. We had a dive on in pretty hard conditions, 35 knots, 40. The main slamming over on the runners, breaking the battens. The worst part is we've um, pulled the track off the back of the mast. We're having a, a big battle here with Dolphin. The last two, three days been just a little bit crazy with so many jobs going on in the discussion zone. Well, it'll be fairly safe to say that this leg has absolutely delivered. Certainly when you consider that, you know, in previous years, sometime, I mean, the, I'm gonna get hung to dry for saying this, but I think the last edition, you could almost say that the Southern Ocean, it had its tame spots. They haven't really had any light winds at all in this. They've never had a break. Even in that final approach to Melbourne, another depression rolls in, another big pounding for some of the teams at the back. That's when we saw Dongfeng race teams ram come into difficulty. We saw that unbelievable knockdown with uh, Turn the tide on plastic. I think that was just last night, wasn't yep. it? They're all blending into one. I mean, it really has been relentless. Well, it has, and and that is actually the key word that we use here in the Volvo Ocean Race. That if you can just imagine getting sprayed in the face continually by ice water coming out of a fire hose, then you know <laughs> it, it's frankly. I'm I'm just going to shut up. I'm not going to say that again because the images that we've just seen from that that leg highlight just speak so much more powerfully than than I can ever express. And I've been down there. I've seen it myself. Um, yeah, in comparison to the previous legs, what they've done is is um, in the last two editions of the race they've they've come out of Cape Town, they've hung a left, and they've gone north and back, back across the equator. Here, they've dived straight into the Indian Ocean, and, uh, and that is really the DNA of this race. Um, so, so anyway, Niall? Well, actually, we can now go to Xavi Fernandez. We've been waiting to see who we could get for you, and we can speak to the man of the hour. Xavi Fernandez, Merry Christmas and congratulations. 
Hey, thank you very much. Merry Christmas, you too. What a fantastic victory for you guys. Double points in this leg. The bonus point for winning as well. You guys are looking very strong at the moment. Yeah, well, fantastic victory for us, of course. A very good leg, a very hard. We had to fight very hard to, to get uh, this victory. So, two times happy, right? Uh, it's so, so much to go yet, and uh, we have to be careful. But, uh, yeah, of course, uh, looking good and very happy, of course. And we talk about Spain and Spain trying to win the Volvo Ocean Race. You look at this result, your result from the previous leg and the first leg, it's nearly a perfect scorecard. You have to feel like you're doing your country proud. Well, I hope so. That's why we're working for every day. And, and you know, so many times this is the fifth Volvo we do as a team uh, in a row. And, you know, we were very close two times ago with Telefonica, which uh, we were looking uh, maybe even better than now. And then, the, you know, we know how the things can get wrong. That's why we have to be careful and that's why we have to keep working leg by leg. And, and you know, of course we have been and of course I know that people is following and they're very proud as well. So. And you must be very proud of your crew because it seems to us here in Alicante and the fans around the world and of course in Spain watching the race, you've got a strong crew behind you. Yeah, that's for sure. That's uh, the strongest thing of this team is, uh, you know, the, the, the group of people uh, on shore and, of course, in the boat. Uh, uh, we are four guys. We did uh, the last race in this boat together and the people coming new, as I said before so many times, uh, they are so good and they give us so much. So very proud, very happy, and they've been working uh, so hard this leg. It's been tough, uh, a lot of maneuvers and, and you know, uh, all, all, all's gone just perfect. And now we have a week to recovery and, uh, you know, and get ready again for the next one. Well, we wish you all the best with your recovery, but there are so many Spanish fans watching you right now, celebrating with you for this fantastic victory. Please, in Spanish, give them a few words. Bueno, poco que decir. Muy contentos con la victoria aquí en Melbourne. La verdad es que ha sido una etapa muy dura que hasta el último día no nos hemos podido relajar. Muy contento, la tripulación súper bien, el barco está todo en una pieza y ahora tenemos una semana aquí para descansar, recuperar y preparar el barco y, y el 2 de enero salimos hacia China. Así que nada, gracias a todos por seguirnos y seguiremos dándolo todo a ver si esto sale bien. Muchas gracias. Xavi, thank you so much. Congratulations, Merry Christmas, and welcome to a well-deserved rest in Melbourne. We'll speak to you later. Thank you very much. Well, that is Xavi Fernandez, five times. This is his fifth go at the Volvo Ocean Race. He was his best result, third on Telefonica Blue 2008-9. Uh, but this is, a, this is the way you want to start. Okay, I mean, the one thing you could pick him apart from was that second in the first leg. I mean, they are really on fire. <laughs> They're absolutely on fire. But I just want to pick up on one thing that, that he himself said. Um, Yes, his best result is, is third on Telefonica, Telefonica Blue, but don't forget they came back with the Telefonica um, Volvo 70, the last one of that generation before we switched to the Volvo Ocean 65. And that is the, the campaign that he is making a reference to here, that they were first in the first three, three legs, so he said better than, the, than their current performance now with, with Mafra, their second attempt, and the wheels came off, didn't it? You know, as they, they won all the first part. They looked really, really strong. They, they lost some, some crucial points um, to eventual winner uh, Group Arma. And then back across uh, the Atlantic, everything came apart. And then in going into, um, into Lorient, they broke three rudders in, in two hours or something like that and finished. So, it, you know, he, he's been here before. He's seen this, this, this film. Um, he knows what it's like to stand on the top step of the podium in the first part of the race. And then I think that he's, all, he's got that nightmare in the back of his mind at the moment. So uh, for sure, very, very proud for Spain. Very, very proud for himself and the team that he's got behind him that's been working so, so hard and putting on a, an impeccable performance all the way through this league and in, indeed back, back to the fast net or you know, back to all of the leg zero, all of the preparatory racing that we've seen they've just been so so strong and yet and yet um, he's been burned once before and I think that they're they're not going to be celebrating until they finally get into um, Gothenburg and then the Hague at the finish but um, but as we've been talking about uh, lately all everything is going their way in the sense that um, they're first here they get the bonus point they get um, they get home early they've got 
Um, a boat that's in perfect condition and, uh, you know, frankly, even though I've been burned once before, if I was shabby, then I would <laughs> absolutely be smiling right now. I'd really be enjoying this moment. All right, well, okay, I tell you what, I've just got a quick question for Conrad here because uh, Conrad's been up against it here. He's a new father, congratulations. But there's, there's one thing here. We've got a couple of facts here, and I'm just going to hit you with one. Uh, obviously, we're coming into Melbourne here, and uh, the last time that the Volvo Ocean Race came into Melbourne, uh, who won that leg? Well, that's one for you out there on Facebook, because I right. have no idea. <laughs> okay, there we go. Let's throw it over to you. There's two things you can do for me uh, yeah. back at home. I'll put it in the comments below if you know who it was that was skippering the boat that won the leg last time we came into Melbourne. Plus, look at this. Conrad's taking his Christmas hat on. If we get enough angry faces on the video at this moment here, I will make sure that he puts that hat back on. Yeah. Now, we've got some more arrivals coming up in the next little bit. We are gonna be following the race to its inevitable conclusion as the whole fleet rolls into Melbourne. Mafre was the boat that pulled out a little way ahead. We've got Dongfong race team, 20 knots of boat speed. Just behind them, we've got Vestas, 11th hour racing, and Team Brunel. Then the battle yet again between David Witt and D. Kafari, Sun Hunkai Scallywag and Turn the Tide on Plastic sparring their way in to the heads and through to Melbourne. And then Axon Abel nursing the boat back up to full speed and now coming in. We are going to leave you there with that incredible scenes from Afre. We will be back shortly with the next arrivals. Don't go anywhere if you've got the Volvo Ocean Race app or if you follow us on Facebook, you will know when we come back on air. And we're gonna leave you with the highlights from Mafre on an unbelievable leg three and a fantastic victory. Start the leg three today, and I think it's gone very well. Maybe we do no. fifty yards. Fifty. Plenty of power here. Ocean race. Merry Christmas and it is all about Melbourne for the finish of leg three. It has been an unbelievable battle through the Southern Ocean but the Spanish team has emerged victorious and they have led the fleet into this fantastic Australian city. They have just 
manage to reach the dock and in only a few hours time they will receive the warm welcome of the city itself and surely a very well deserved rest as well. I'm joined here in the studio in race headquarters in Alicante by Conrad Coleman as always. Thank you very much. He's got his Christmas hat on so we are ready to have a look at all the festivities that are happening and all the joyous occasions down on the dock when the boat gets there and Conrad I mean we, we talk about the long time that the sailors have got to send, bend out in the water, but it's almost cruel to see just how hard it is to get these boats that are built for the ocean back on the shore and they can finally step off. Well, that's right. It takes a long, long time to get the mainsail down. Everything is set up so that it lasts at sea. But here they are. They're finally all mainsail not only down, but off the boom, clean. The boat is at the dock and we can see them there tying up after weeks at sea. Now, it's important to point out here for Mafre, this is an absolutely monumental moment. We were talking about it when we caught them live going across the finish line, and we did manage to speak to the skipper, Shabby Fernandez. He's down on the dock there, and as soon as we get audio, we're gonna, in fact, I think we've got some audio now from the dock, so let's go down and hear what's happening in well, Melbourne. Two or three days ago, we could uh, pass them, and then it's been all, all good for us, yes. Yeah, it's, it's been hard. Any tricks to how you pass them? Well, I'm not going to tell you, but uh, <laughs> yes, uh, we kept close and, and then, you know, we, we took our opportunity, so we're very happy. And you're proud of the crew? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Of course, very proud. They've done a very good job. And, you know, it's, this thing is going well and, and hopefully we can keep it like this. It's a, a, a double point. So that's very satisfying to know that uh, you're in the lead at the moment and uh, you've got a long way to go. But are you. Uh, uh, is, is the double point very important to you? Yeah, of course it's important. We knew this leg was uh, very important for a lot of reasons. One because it was a hard one, a windy one, and then of course a double pointer. So even heavier, you know, but uh, we know how much is left, we know how the things can get wrong. So, so the only thing we have to do is prepare the next one, and we in a week and keep going at it. And it's two hours for the question about the Southern Ocean. Is that how many times have you done the Southern Ocean? And was it as tough as you thought it was this time? Well, I don't know. I've been a couple of times already, and you know, you always have a, a tough week for sure, and this one had a the tough week as well, so I don't know if it's in the, hot, the, the toughest or not, but the, it's been windy, it's been quite cold, and you know, we we're looking forward to get here, that's for sure. Fantastic, thank nice. you very much, Harry. Thank you. Well, I, I unbelievable to hear that sort of understated approach from Xabi Fernandez. We, we hear a lot from Peter Burling and Blair Took about how humble, you know, we're always used to that response, but yeah, it's been pretty cold. I mean, that doesn't really give it the full description. It's been pretty cold. I think um, the coldest temperature that I saw uh, in, the, in the blogs of the freezing fingers of the na navigators as they wrote their messages back to us was about four degrees. So if you can imagine air temperature and most importantly, sea temperature down at four degrees, considering that th these sailors have a rather intimate relationship with the sea when they're uh, even on board the boat. Um, and just to answer the question that, that Shabby, in his humble uh, status, did not, um, this is his fifth Volvo Ocean race, and then he did the Barcelona World Race as well. And so I think that was his sixth time uh, during the course of his career through the Indian Ocean. So a couple of times. He knows what's up. And it's interesting that in the last edition, if we're fans of the Volvo Ocean Race, you'll know this, in the last edition, of course, he wasn't really meant to be skipper. He fell into the skippership role on occasion when his longtime sailing partner, I Ica Martinez, had to step off for other commitments. This time, he's really put himself front and center. And I know I keep coming back to this, but there's a lot to like about this guy's leadership style. Well, well, yeah, absolutely. The, every, you know, we, we have a bit of a chuckle in the studio every time um, that we talk about his, his understated character. Uh, but frankly, it looks like they have a great time on board. Well, we can now hear more from Melbourne and Sophie Cizek is on the dock. Yeah. Are you aware that it's Christmas Day? Yeah, Merry Christmas, everybody. And um, yeah, I'm pretty happy to be here and get to go to my family lunch today, which wasn't expecting. So yeah, I'll get to see all my family and it's going to be really good. Must be a good feeling being on the winning boat. Yeah, it's on. We have a great team. Thanks, everybody. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool to come in first place on the Southern Ocean Lake. And as I'm both, we're both from Mornings in Your Club, I know they're very proud of you at Mornings in Your Club. Oh, awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Sophie. Thank you. And now we get some time for Mornings in Your And the team is. Congratulations. 
Oh, live images coming to us from the other side of the world right now. So occasionally a little bit of breakup, but one thing that was abundantly clear, um, special to finish the leg, special to win it, and special mm. to sail into your home port as well. There's nothing better. There, there really isn't. I've, I've actually had the, uh, the pleasure of being able to do that myself, and, uh, well, it warms the cockles of your heart, that's for sure. You have a great time out there. And, and of course, you know, for these teams, uh, now to be thinking about the next leg, I mean, it's almost kind of cruel in that way that the Volvo Ocean Race just rumbles on. Mafre now winning a leg, they barely get a chance to celebrate before they've got to think about the next one. Well, yep, relentless, that's the word that, that sums up the Volvo Ocean Race. Um, nine months, 45,000 miles, all the way around the world, and they're only, well, they're halfway around the world, but they're only, what, a third of the way in terms of the, the miles sailed over the course of, uh, of this race. You know? um, that, you know, nat naturally they sort of roll on, um, hit, uh, Jason, what is it, the sunsets, right? No, Jason, the sunrises, they go east around the world. Um, however, at the moment, they, they're going to turn on the left-hand indicator and they're going to turn a um, uh, big left-hand side all the way up to Asia, to, to Hong Kong, Guangzhou, and then back down to Auckland. Um, so it's basically this big dog leg um, drawn right the way across the globe, back and forth. Um, yeah, it's, it's incredible. Um, but... What is really going to pay uh, pay dividends here? We talked about it briefly as um, as we arrived. Uh, is the fact that they're the first boat in. They've got a couple of shore crew there. They can help them uh, turn the boat around, uh, tickle up a few little problems that they may have had. Um, oh, look, looks like we're going. We've these got are, images there. Yeah, these are just images just coming through here. We can see the skipper, Shabby Fernandez, out there. But, but one thing you were just talking about a minute ago, Conrad, is the race is still going. And there is still a race out there. We're seeing images of Shabby Fernandez, Sophie Cizik, and the rest of the crew. Sophie Cizik being a native of Melbourne, which is why the smile on her face is just that little bit bigger than some of the others. But the race out on the water rages on. And we're going to have a little bit of a look at where the fleet is right now, because over the next 24 hours and indeed next few days, there's an awful lot still to be decided. The white trail on your screen now, that was the line that the Spanish boat Mafre have sailed in. Dongfeng race team, the red boat in second place and looking like they're gonna be able to hold that all the way. We know that they've had a little bit of problems, but they are about two hours away from the finish line in the current conditions that they have. Looking further back, in fact, outside, just outside the bay, we've got Vestas 11th Hour Racing. And I know that Charlie Enright and Mark Towell are going to be very happy that they are sailing into the bay ahead of Team Brunel because there was a point when the Dutch boat was seriously putting them under pressure. Where is Team Brunel and Bauer Becking? We're just a little way behind. Sadly, on this occasion, for Dutch fans, they've just lost out on that battle, but they're certainly proving themselves get faster and faster each leg as it rolls on. Right now, they are trundling along at plus 18 knots. If we go further back, now we start to see a little bit of movement in the fleet. It's those front four who are gonna be concluded in the next short while. Then, a little bit of a weight on our hands. Sun Hunkai Scallywag, turn the tide on plastic. Two teams that I constantly say together because whenever we dial into this race, they are neck and neck. And then Axon Abel, Simeon Team Point with that unfortunate jibe in the, the Southern Ocean which caused damage to their mast track. That really put them on the back foot. However, we now know, speaking to Chris Nicholson, they're up to 100% speed wise, but just too much distance to catch up. They know that they're gonna be finishing this leg in last place, but they are pushing hard to maximize the time they've got to ready their boat for the next leg and sleep as well. So. Conrad, we've got a very busy next 24 hours or less as the next sort of three boats come in to finish, but behind that, still a battle on. Absolutely. That's, um, I, I'm frankly really excited to see what happens with Sun Hung Kai, Scallywag, and Turn the Tide on Plastic. You know that the, these two skippers, David Witt on the Hong Kong boat and, uh, and Dika Fari with her bunch of youngsters, uh, one of them came into, into the race route, don't forget, saying that he was going to blow, blow the race apart and uh, teach everybody a bit of a lesson. On the other side, very, very humble, uh, here for learning and, uh, and bringing new sailors into the race. The two of them are together, sort of uh, not, not giving each other any quarter at all. It's a fascinating race, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens next. It is going to be rather interesting as we roll forward, of course, because we've got a lot of teams that, you know, you could argue that it's not a question of uh, if, but when. You know, teams like Turn the Tide on Plastic, they have got an unbelievable combination of sailors on board. Mafre, okay, Dongfeng Race yeah. Team, they're two boats that put so much time on the water before the, before the yeah. race got underway. But 
we are still waiting for those other teams just to crack. And, you know, when can we really expect that? Is it going to be one leg's time or is it just going to be when we cross that final finish line that they really come to the front? Well, remember uh, last time the, the bunch of youngsters was on Alvin America, uh, which was, I think, your team, your favourite team in the last uh, Oh, I would never have favourites. I would never have favourites, no. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me. You speak highly of them. Uh, so, Team Alpha Medica, uh, the Turkish-American team last time round, uh, they were the youngsters coming in. They had relatively little time with their boats, uh, with the boat beforehand. So, they were not, not quite in the same position as Turn the Tide, but let, let's, let's put them in, in that corner. They fought their way all the way through, uh, through the race, learning every single step. Uh, they finally led, uh, led the entire fleet around Cape Horn, so an incredible step. Mm. Uh, and then they finally won their first and, and the final leg, uh, uh, of, of the last last edition of the race, the 2014-15. Uh, most notably, uh, that, that team turned into Vestas 11th Hour Racing, uh, which uh, which won uh, won the second leg on the on the trot. So the first leg of, of this edition. So no, go, going with that, maybe turn the tide on plastic uh, can can um, benefit from all of the experience of the race around the world, and then finally benefit from having more people uh, on board the boat during the shorter legs when we've got the the Gothenburg uh, legs of the Hague. So and, that could be this. And the standard to beat right now is Mafre. I mean, when we talk about a team that have really got off to a flying start, the Spanish team have done just that. We are going to sign off here. We are getting already into the Christmas spirit. The sailors on board Mafre now have their chance to get onto dry land and join in the festivities and the celebration of a well-deserved leg win. And we're going to leave you with their highlights of an unbelievable Southern Ocean leg. Start the leg three today, and I think it's gone very well. Maybe we do no. 50 yards. Plenty of power here. 